हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला द नेक्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी विल लर्न अबाउट इट्स कॉल्ड द क्यूमुलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन इन शॉर्ट इट इज रेफर्ड टू एज सीडीएफ सो लेट्स लर्न व्हाट सीडीएफ इज हाउ इट इज रिलेटेड टू पीडीएफ व्हाई इट इज यूजफुल एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो लेट मी फर्स्ट राइट द कोड फॉर प्लॉटिंग द पीडीएफ एंड सीडीएफ फॉर पेटल एंड फॉर my setosa flowers so we already have seen the pdf but we have not seen the cdf so let me write the code for plotting the pdf and cdf as well in the same plot then we will move ahead with the discussion part so here let me write the code plot for cdf of petal length petal underscore l e n g t h fine cons first let me write this uh, code then i will explain you these things And then write bin ages bin cons comma bin ages is equal to np dot histogram inside this i need to write iris underscore setosa because first i need to write for setosa that's why i am writing iris underscore setosa and thereafter inside this i have to pass petal length let's pass petal length after this i have to specify the bin size so let's specify the bin size to be let's say 10 i am passing 10 here as my bin size and after that there is one more parameter called density let's write density is equal to true true fine so this is my code first line of code second thing is that to calculate pdf i need to write pdf is equal to counts divided by sum write this sum in the bracket let's write sum inside this bracket and then put one more bracket here inside that bracket i am writing counts then this thing then this thing fine then print p r i n t print pdf here and also i want to print print bin underscore ages bin underscore ages fine this will plot my pdf and cdf cdf this will plot my cdf and pdf now to calculate the uh cdf what i need to do compute let me write here compute cdf cdf let's write one variable cdf is equal to np dot cum sum this is we have already studied these things in uh, pandas this is cumulative sum function and pass i am passing pdf here inside this function and then let's plot it plt for plotting plt dot plot plt dot plot let's write plot and inside this pass bin underscore ages bin underscore ages and thereafter inside the square bracket from 1 till the end comma pdf pdf fine let let me copy the same line of code here and paste it here i need to change here to cdf if so here i am plotting this pdf and cdf fine 
this is all the code that I have I am having. Let's run this code. So I am getting this thing. So this blue color is uh, this blue line is my PDF and this line, this orange line is my CDF. Fine. So let's see one thing. The whatever plot I have plotted here, this my PDF and CDF, I have plotted this with the bin size of 10. Now let's what I'm doing, let's copy all the code from here and paste it in a new cell. Here I'm pasting and now I'm simply nothing. Only I'm going to change is the bin size from 10 to let's say I'm putting bin size is equal to 20. Everything else is same. Nothing is changing. I'm not changing anything except the bin size. This is just for making uh, to show you something. If let's say I'm changing the bin size to 20. Let's say how my curve, this PDF and CDF is changing. So if let's say I have changed this bin size to 20 and then I am running my code. Let's see how the curve is changing, how the PDF has been changed and this CDF is changed, both PDF and CDF is changing. This is one thing that I want you to make you understand. Now the second thing that I want you to understand is Let's plot these two curves on the same graph. Everything will remain same, only the bin size I'm changing to 20. In one plot, bin size is 10 and in another plot, the bin size is 20 and both I'm keeping it on this same plot so that I can make a comparison. So let's see now the plot, how the plot is changing. Can you see just this is just for your understanding comparison, nothing else, nothing more. When my bin size was 10, my PDF was like this. My PDF was like this. When bin size get changed, or see how the PDF is changing. This is just for your reference. How this CDF is changing. Earlier, my CDF was this orange line. Now, how the CDF is changing. This is just for your understanding. We will look into it later now let me do one thing let me enlarge this to this plot and let's discuss these this plot first so this is the plot you we have just now plotted so here if you can see in this plot here your blue line is your pdf this is my pdf what does PDF means? Probability density function. And this orange line here corresponds to my CDF. CDF means cumulative density function. This is my CDF. So now let's let me again just see this axis here. I'm taking this axis here. This x axis is my petal length. This is my petal length of setosa flowers, petal length of setosa this this axis is my petal length of setosa and this y axis is basically my probability this is my probability fine so if you look at this plot so what it says this x axis is basically the petal length of setosa flowers and this y axis is giving me the probability now Let's take any point here. Let's take this point 1.5 here and let's take this point 1.6 here. So if you look at this point correspond, if you look at 1.5, if you look at the corresponding value on the PDF, this blue line is my PDF. So this is my point. If you look at this 1.6, this is my point on PDF. So you can see that this point is corresponding to around 20. This is, this is, let's say, uh, it will be around 30% and this point is around 20% and lot of points are there in between these two. So I'm just taking 
all the points in between this 1.5 to 1.6 around approximately typically you i am taking this point as 20 percent so i can say because this is around 20 percent and this is also around uh, this is around 20 percent and other points are in between so let's take uh if i will talk about the point between one point sorry 1.5 and if let's say if I will take the point between 1.5 and 1.6, what will be my points? Approximately, I can say 20% of my points lies between 1.5 and 1.6. That means 20% of the points typically have 20% typically have petal length between 1.5 and 1.6. You can say, right? So this height here, this height represents how many points are there in this range. So this height represents how many points are in this range. That means how many points have a petal length of 1.5. This height basically, so how many points have a petal length of 1.6. So that's why, so this height represents how many points are there in this range typically right so that's what your pdf is probability density function now cdf says a completely different story let's see what a uh, first let's understand uh, let's see see what this cdf tells us so let's say if i take a value if let's say if i take a value 1.6 here so this 1.6 is basically what? So this is a petal length of setosa flowers. If I take a value of 1.6 here, this is a petal length of setosa flower. So if you, the function in our CDF, so let's see what is the corresponding value of this 1.6. What is the corresponding value of 1.6 for CDF? This is the corresponding value of 1.6 for PDF. And this is the corresponding value of 1.6 for CDF. Because this, this, this graph is, this line is my CDF. So for 1.6, this is the corresponding value of PDF. And this is the corresponding value of CDF. So I, right now I am talking about CDF. So let's focus on CDF only. So the corresponding value is roughly just above, if you see, it's coming just above 0.880 or 80%. So let's see, it is coming like this. If I just extend this point, it will be somewhere around 0.82. It will come somewhere around 0.82. This is my 0.82. Fine. So this is the CDF and the corresponding value of CDF on y-axis is 0.82 or 82% you can say. And I'm just making the uh, approximation here. This is not the exact thing. So what it means, this means that this means that 82% of 82% of setosa setosa flowers flowers have petal length less than equal to 1.6 this is very important when i am taking this 1.6 length of my setosa flowers setos petal length of setosa flowers and i am taking the corresponding value of on cdf so when i am seeing it on y axis it is coming out to be 82 percent or 0 0.82 what this signifies this means that this means that 82 percent of setosa flowers have petal length less than equal to 1.6 this is what we can read from this plot. And this is extremely useful information. 
we cannot get that info information out of your PDF. We are not getting this same, this type of information out of my PDF, what I'm getting out of my CDF. So we can't get the same insight out of your PDF. So the first thing you will notice as soon as you see this plot is it's always starts from zero on the left bottom. It is always starting from here and it is always going till the right bottom and uh, uh, right top, not bottom, right top. It, it is always going till one at the top starts from zero here and going till here till one at the top. And this is one, this is one. So, which means this one means, this one means 100%. This means 100%. In terms of probability, this means 100%. And what this 100% means? This means all. 100% means all. This one signifies 100%. This signifies 0. This signifies 1 means 100%. 100% means all. It means that 100% of Setosa flowers, what we can uh, derive from here, that 100% of my Setosa flowers, can you see? My CDF is maximum going till 1. And this is my 1. This means 100% of my Setosa flowers have a petal length less than or equal to 1.9. This is 1.9. Can you see this curve? This is 1.9. This means 100% of my setosa flowers have length less than equal to 1.9. It also means that no setosa flowers is having a length greater than 1.9. In this other way, you can see like that. Similarly, let's take some other value. Let's take, uh, let's take this value 1.3. And if you take this 1.3, the corresponding value on the CDF is kind of this is a value on PDF and the corresponding value on CDF will be like this. So if I just see this value on Y axis, what it it will be? So this seems to be around, let's say 15.15. This is zero and this is two and it is coming in a midway. So I'm taking like uh, somewhere around 0.15. This value is coming out to be, let's say 0.15 around. So this value seems to be a, around 1.5, no, sorry, 0.15. We, so what this means, this 1.3 here means that this setosa flower is having a petal length of 1.3. And the corresponding value on the CDF is like 0.15. What this means? This means 15% of Setosa flowers have petal length less than or equal to 1.5. This means, let me write it here, 15% of Setosa have petal length less than or equal to 1.3. We can understand this thing from this. We have understood this thing from 82% of such of flowers have petal length less than equal to 1.8. Here, if you will take this 1.3 corresponding value on CDF, what you are deriving? 15% of such of flowers have petal length less than equal to 1.3. Right? So the percentage you can read on the y-axis says what percentage of flowers have a value less than equal to the corresponding x-axis point here. That's what's your uh, that's what your CDF says. What I am repeating it once again. The percentage you can read on the y-axis says. What percentage of flowers have a value less than or equal to the corresponding x-axis points here? That's what your CDF says. Of course, nothing can have 
less than zero probability and nothing can have can have more than one probability because all probabilities lies between zero percent and hundred percent all probabilities lie between zero percent and hundred percent right that's what we can quickly read from the cdf so now we understand how to read a cdf this is we understood and what is cdf we 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 got a fair idea till this point now the immediate question is how do you build a cdf how do you plot a cdf so we understood how to read a cdf but the important question is how do you build a cdf now we saw that you build a CD pdf we have already built a pdf in the previous sessions by taking histograms and then smoothing it up and we will learn about how this smoothing exactly works when we learn about the gaussian distributions but for now let's see how cdf is built so uh, let me erase these things first let me save this thing fine now let me erase this thing and then i am going to discuss fine for understanding how to build a cdf i am taking one value let's take a value let's say i am taking this 1.6 here 1.6 itself 1.6 here so what is the corresponding point on the cdf plot this is my pdf this is my pdf and this is my cdf so what is the corresponding point on pdf this is the corresponding point on pdf sorry cdf for 1.6 now how do i get this point let's understand if i have taken any point i, I have taken this point 1.6 you, you can take any point whatever point you like it's not that you should take 1.6 you can take 1.8 or any point but let's say i'm taking 1.6 here so first thing that we should look at what is the corresponding point on the cdf plot so this is my pdf plot we know this is my PDF plot and we know this is my CDF plot. This is my CDF plot and this is my Setosa flowers, petal length of Setosa flowers. So this is the corresponding point on CDF plot. So how do I get this point? So you basically say how many flowers have a petal length of less than equal to 1.6. This means how many flowers have a petal length less than equal to 1.6 this means and when you count all your points you have 50 points because you know in the uh, iris data set we have total 150 points 50 setosa 50 versicolor and 50 virginica these are the three point three all the uh flowers are having 50 50 50 count that that was that's why it was a balanced data set so we know from our knowledge that we have 50 total 50 points are there in my data so that means this petal length is having 50 points because 50 flowers is there setosa 50 setosa flowers is there so that's why we have 50 points here so you basically say how many flowers have a petal length if i will ask you how many flowers have a petal length less than equal to 1.6 because total flowers is 50 and i'm asking you how many flowers is having a petal length less than equal to 1.6 now when you count all your points so when you count all your points your points should be 50 because we have 50 points now let's say out of this 50 flowers out of this 50 setosa flowers out of this 50 setosa flowers only 41 setosa flowers let's say 41 setosa flowers have a petal length which is less than equal to 1.6 
out of this 50 setosa flowers only 41 setosa flowers have a petal length less than 40 less than equal to 1.6 this only 41 setosa flowers have a petal length less than equal to 1.6 let's suppose this is and our total data set is 50 points right so if i divide 41 by let's say 50 into 100 let's say this is 100 what i will get i will get 82 percent 82 percent that is 0.82 what i mean if let's say here i am having 41 set of flowers having petal length less than equal to 1.6 that means if I will divide 41 by 50, that is the total number of setosa flowers into 100. And if I will take the percentage, my percentage will come out to be 82%. What it means that 80% of my setosa flowers, 80, sorry, 82% of my setosa flowers have a petal length less than 1.6. Out of the 50 flowers, only uh, 41 flowers have a Setosa flowers having a petal length less than or equal to 1.6. And if you put this on the y axis, and if you put that on the y axis, this thing on the y axis here, this point will come out to be 0.82 or 82 percent, whatever you say. Fine. So, and if you keep repeating this, I have calculated this percentage for, let's say, 1, 1, uh, 1 1.6 length of the petal length, 1.6 petal length. And if you keep repeating this, you keep repeating for, let's say, 1.61 for this point, let's say, 1.65, let's say, 1.7, let's say, 1.75, let's say, 1.2, let's say, 1.3. Let's say this point in this point, as many number of points as you like and so forth. If you keep doing the same thing what I have done here, this 4150 thing. So you will get the corresponding points here on your hair. You will get the corresponding points. And when you join those points, you will get this whole curve. This curve that you are getting which is your CDF curve, this curve CDF, by joining all those points, likewise I have get, I got this point 82%. First I got this 82%. Then I have marked that 82% on this and I plotted this thing. I have drawn a line and I got this point, this point of 82%. Similarly, I will take, I will take other points and I will calculate the percentage. I will mark that and after that, at the end, when I will join all those points, I will get a curve like this. And this curve is called, I will get a curve something like this. So when I will join, let's say I, I have found out these, these points and thereafter I have joined these points. So the curve that I am getting after joining these points, these are called, the this curve is called CDF. So that's how you construct your CDF. Fine. So in the same way, if you take this 1.3, this point 1.3. So for it looks like somewhere around 15% we have already seen previously. It looks like 15%. So this point will give you like 15%. This point will get you 15%. That means 15% of points are below this 15% of your setosa flowers have a petal length less than 1.3. So that's one way of calculating the uh, CDF. PDF is basically how many flowers are there for each point. If you will simply calculate, if you will simply construct the histogram around PDF and just by smoothing the histogram, you are getting the PDF, we already know this. By smoothing the histogram, we are getting the PDF. So let's, I'm just creating a small, small P 
histograms here. These are my histograms. These are my histograms for this PDF. These are the histograms. These are the histograms of my PDF. So if I have smoothen this, this, this is my PDF and these are the histograms for my PDF. And if I smoothen this, these histograms, I'm getting this PDF because PDF is, I'm getting PDF or by smoothening the histograms. So I'm getting this histogram. After smoothing these histograms, I'm getting this PDF. So you can plot a histogram like this, which we smooth to get the PDF, right? So if you count all of them, let's say, uh, if you want a value for 1.6, if you want a value for 1.6, if you want the CDF value, what I'm telling you, this is my 1.6 or let's say this is my 1.8, fine. Let's take this 1.8 value. And if I want a CDF value for this 1.8, so the corresponding CDF value for 1.8 will be something around here. This is. So you can also calculate this. You can simply do one thing. You can plus you what you can do, how you can get this CDF out of your this histogram or out of your uh, this PDF. What you can do, you can simply sum this, sum this, sum of this, sum this, sum this, sum this, sum this, and sum this. This point itself. The whole sum till this point will give you the CDF. So you can simply sum up this, this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this till here, till this point. That will give you the height, this height, this CDF height. And it's basically a cumulative sum. It's basically a cumulative sum. Cumulative sum means sum of all those points. This sum plus this sum plus this sum plus this sum plus height of all the histograms till this point. Or let's say if you want to calculate the CDF of this point, so height of all the histograms till this point, including this height also will give you your CDF. So, for any value here x, for any value here x, the corresponding y value can be found using the approach I just told you, this 41 by 50 approach, 41 out of 50 case that I just explained a while ago. So you can count all these, the height of all these probabilities that come before that, including that value, that's called a cumulative sum. And when you do that, you can easily compute what is the Y value corresponding to the X coordinate in CDF. And for those who know calculus, let me save this and so for those who know calculus and who remember area under integration and things like that. If you don't remember or if you don't recall, it's okay. We will co cover it when we will learn calculus in more details. But if you recall calculus, basically if you have a PDF, if you have a PDF, the corresponding value of the CDF is basically the area under the curve. Let's say I have a PDF. I have a PDF. This is, let's say this is my point and this is my PDF. This is the point on VDF. And if I want the value on CDF, what is this? If you will draw, if you will calculate the area, this area under the curve, this area till this point. If I want to calculate the CDF at this point. So if I will just calculate the area till this point of my PDF, I will get the corresponding CDF. 
this area under the curve will give me the, this area area under the curve will give me the corresponding cdf the cdf so that's what cdf is right so the area under the curve of your pdf till that point area under the curve will give cdf till that point point now if you differentiate let's say if you differentiate your cdf let me write it here in some other color let's let me take this blue color if you differentiate if you differentiate if you differentiate your cdf if you differentiate cdf you get your pdf that means if you differentiate cdf cdf means cumulative density function you will get pdf fine and if you do if you integrate pdf if you integrate integrate that means you do integration of integration of pdf you will get cdf cdf fine so on integrating integration of pdf will give you cdf that's what i am doing here by calculating the area under this curve so basically this area under the curve is my integration and this is giving me the cdf value and if i am differentiating the cdf i am getting the pdf in terms of calculus if i will talk this is what it means so those of you who don't know calculus or who have forgotten calculus it's okay this is just an additional point that i am making here we learn some of these concepts when we will learn calculus and optimization later in the course so if you already know this that's easy so what's i what i've told you if you differentiate your cdf you will get pdf and if you integrate your pdf you will get cdf fine those of you who know calculus if you don't know now i am computing this pdf on petal length with 10 bins and i have also shown you by changing the bins to 20 and plot another plot now to compute cdf it's just one line literally for computing this cdf for computing this cdf is just one line literally one line of code what i'm doing in numpy there is a function called cumulative sum come sum means cumulative sum this cumulative sum is a function in numpy which is used to calculate the cumulative sum that is all the points that is sum of all the points till that point what it means so this is a come sum function so this come sum function is basically cumulative sum the word cumulative i have already used earlier so if you take your if you take your histogram with this pdf if you take your histogram and sum up everything before that value that's called a cumulative sum hope you understand this if you take your histogram and sum up everything before that value that's called a cumulative sum now when you apply this come sum function on pdf can you see here i am applying my function come sum on my pdf you just get a cdf and you just simply plot your cdf is after that you can simply plot your cdf and pdf also and it's a very very straightforward here so this is all the code literally this is a one line of code 
So from the code perspective, it's very easy to compute CDF from PDF using a function called cumulative sum. Fine. Now, let me take you to something else and explain you something else. Now, let's see one thing. Just now, here I have plotted the PDF and CDF of Iris setosa with a petal length. Iris setosa, petal, petal length of Iris setosa. So I plotted the CDF and PDF of the setosa flowers. Fine. I Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate, I'm going to plot the PDF and CDF of Iris versicolor and Iris virginica. Fine. Then I will see Fine. Let me do this thing. One thing. So let's copy this code and I'm going to paste it in a new cell. So let's copy this code again and let's again copy this code again here. Now, this first part of code is fine. It's written Agis Setosa. Everything is fine. Now here I am making a changes. Instead of this Setosa, what is my second flower? Second flower is Versicolor. Fine. So let me put here Iris Versicolor. Iris Versicolor. Thereafter Iris Setosa. Remove it and put it as Virginica. Virginica. This is the third flower. So everything is same. Nothing. I have just changed the name because now I want to plot uh, the PDF and CDF of both of Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And let's run this code and see what I am getting. Then I will discuss. So I'm just running this code and let's see what the plot I'm getting. I'm getting a plot something like this. Fine. So let me see what is the bin size. Bin size is 10. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's change the bin size to 10 because it is much better. I'm changing the bin size to 10. I'm changing the bin size to 10. Fine. Now again I am going to run this. Let's save this. Again run this and see this time how my plot is look like. How my plot. So this is my plot. So let's see the enlarged version of this plot and then we will discuss it once again. So I have plotted the PDF and CDF of this is my if PDF and CDF of my Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica flowers. Now the next question is why CDF is useful? Next question is why CDF is useful? Useful. This is my next. So how is CDF useful for our IDS data set. So let's look at it. So I have plotted the petal length. These are the Oof. let me erase this. Actually, I'm not good at writing on SPAD. So <clears throat> this is my petal length. Petal length. And this is basically my y-axis probabilities and cons. Now, if you see this, what I have done, this is my setosa. This is setosa. Setosa. This is my versicolor. Versicolor. And this is my virginica. 
virginica these are the three flowers that i am having and this is the pdf of setosa this is the pdf of versicolor and this is the pdf of virginica virginica and this is the cdf of versicolor this is the cdf of versicolor uh, this is the cdf of setosa this is the cdf of versicolor and this is the cdf of virginica Fine. Now comes the interesting part. What is the interesting part is, see, all these plots are going from 0 till 1. You understand this very well? 0 to 1. So, I have one very interesting question here. I could say all the petal length I could say if the petal length is less than 2, equal to 2, because you can see here all the petal length is less than 2. If the petal length is less than, I can say petal length, I can write here petal length less than equal to 2, then setosa. Fine. Petal length less than 2, equal to 2, then setosa. And that's perfect. Because all setosa flowers have a value less than or equal to 2. You can see here from the plot. Because you, if you see the CDF of setosa flowers also, if you can see, if you see the CDF of setosa flowers, CDF, this CDF is like this is 100%. This point is 100%. The corresponding PDF, if you this is this corresponding value of uh, of the setosa flower that means 100% of the setosa flowers or setosa points or setosa flowers have a petal length less than or equal to 2 and you are done so in case of setosa there is no issue everything is fine because setosa has 100% of my setosa flowers have a petal length less than or equal to 2 so in other way, if you can, this is what you can say, petal length less than or equal to 2, that means setosa. And when you are saying this, petal length less than or equal to 2, then setosa, you are going to be 100% correct. 100% correct with this. Correct. Because 100% of the points, 100% of the points have a value less than this. Now comes the trickier case between versicolor and virginica. Let's understand this trickier case because still here there is no issue. Let me erase this. Fine. So what is this trickier case? So suppose I put a value of, this is my point 5, you can see this, this is a 5. I put a value of 5 as my threshold. I am taking this point 5 as my threshold. We already know this threshold. Threshold. So, I have, I put this point 5 as my threshold because that's where the two PDFs, this, this PDF, this is the PDF of versicolor. And this is the PDF of Virginica. These two PDFs are meeting here at and this intersection point is the petal length of 5. That's where these PDF, PDF of Versicolor and Virginica are meeting. So I am taking this point as my threshold. We already discussed this. Where should I take my threshold? So if I use 5 as my threshold, Threshold is equal to here, my 5 is my threshold. So if I use 5 as my threshold, an interesting thing happens. Let's see what is the, let's see what is the corresponding value of, uh, what is the corresponding value of CDF here. So I have to take the corresponding value of the CDF on both versicolor and virginica. So let's take for versicolor. So the corresponding value of this CDF 
corresponding value of this 5.5 on this CDF, on the CDF of Versi color. This is my Versi color is here, somewhere here. This is the corresponding value of CDF. And if you, if, if let's say, if you will plot it like this, this point, it will, the corresponding value of it, it looks close to like, it's like 0.95. Because this is my point eight, this comes up to be point nine, so it is between. So somewhere I am taking it. Let's say point nine five, point nine five. That is ninety five percent. So this looks like on the y axis, it is point nine five. So for the threshold of five, for a petal length threshold of five, the corresponding value on CDF for my versicolor flower is. 0.95. So what? This is clear. Now, I this is the I have calculated the CDF for my versi color. This is for versi color because this is my versi color. This is versi color. See color. Now let's take the CDF for virginica. Virginica. Now, if you see the CDF of Virginica is somewhere here, just like this. So it's coming out to be something if I will plot it like this. So it, it will be something, it's somewhere in the half line here. So let's take approximately, let's take it, it to be 0 0.10. 0 0.10 is the point on y axis for virginica flowers because this is my cdf the corresponding value of our cdf is 0 0.10 on the y axis so this will be like this point will be 0 0.10 let's take this like this fine So it will be somewhere around fine. Now, now if I say, now comes the very important thing. So this is what I have understood from the now. Now let's come to something else. Then I will add these things up. Okay. So you have understood this thing. That means on the CDF of this 10% of my uh, this flowers, virginica flowers have a petal length less than 10%. This is what means. Okay. Now, if I say, if petal length is, if I say, if I say, if I say, petal length greater than 2 and, and petal length less than 5. Then verse verse color. Then declare it to be verse color. See here what I am telling. If petal length is greater than two, let's write two here. If petal length is greater than two and petal length is less than 5 then versicolor this is my versicolor which is greater than 2 and less than 5 because versicolor flowers so if you see i am writing this thing as otherwise if i i can also say and if i say petal length let's say here i am writing if i say petal length greater than 2 and and petal length greater than 5 then greater than greater than 5 greater than 5 then virginica g nika let's say if i say this thing 
my petal length is greater than two at one time. Here I am saying petal length greater than two and petal length less than five. If petal length is greater than two and less than five, then versicolor. And if petal length is greater than two and greater than five also, then virginica. If I am saying this, what it means? So here I have just written these two if and else, if else conditions. For setosa, it's very clear, right? So I'm not writing anything. For versicola and virginica, let's let's assume I wrote the rules like this. This is my rule for uh, versicola and this is the rule for virginica. This is the rule for versicola. This is the rule for versicola. And this is the rule for virginica. So these rules are, of course, these rules are not going to be perfect. Why these rules that I have written right now is not going to be perfect? Because these PDFs are intersecting. But when I wrote a rule like this, when I wrote a rule like this, I am going to be correct with versicolor. I am going to be correct with 95% of the time. Let me write it here. For, for versicolor, I am going to be 95% correct and 5% I am incorrect I will explain you incorrect correct so this means 95% of vertical flowers have a petal length less than 5 this information is giving me this thing that 95% of my versicolor flowers have a petal length less than 5. So, which means 95% of my versicolor flowers will be leveled correctly. That's why I am correct 95% of my times. And 5% will not be leveled correctly. We are making mistake 5% of the time. Because 95% five, of my versicolor flowers are leveled correctly and 5% are will be not leveled correctly. That's why I am making 95% making correct. I am 95% I am correct and 5% incorrect. That is, I am 95% of the time I am correct and 5% of the time I am incorrect. Now, similarly, what about virginica? Let's talk about virginica. Here, what it means? I am saying if it is greater than 5, what I am saying in virginica, if it is greater than 5, understand this rule. I am talking about this less than 5. When my petal length is less than 5, less than 5, I am writing this rule for greater than 2 and let me erase it and write it properly. So, greater than 2 and and 5. Because I am writing this rule for Petal length greater than 2 and less than 5, then versicolor. So, this rule, by writing this rule, I am 95% correct and 5% incorrect. But now let's look at this virginica. I am saying it is greater than 5 only. When it is greater than petal length is greater than 5 and greater than 2. When greater than 5, then it is virginica. So, but there are 10% of points which are less than 5. Can you see what this signifies? This point signifies 10% of the points of virginica are less than 10% of the virginica flowers have a petal length less than 5. This means 10% of my virginica flowers, this CDF will give me, this CDF of virginica, uh, virginica is giving me this formation, 10% of the petal lengths 
cannot be understood from your pdfs only which can be understood from the cdfs 